if you don't like IG Reels, maybe we'll try carousels. And that's what we're going to talk about right now <laughs> in regards to how to actually put out very strategic carousels. Um, because they still have a place on Instagram. Instagram is not only about Reels. So we're going to kind of dive into like some of the strategy that we use in regards to creating some of our most engaging and high-reaching carousels. With that being said, I want to ask you guys, I think I know the answer to this. Do you still believe that carousels are important today? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's really like three pieces of content that I really like to post. And there's obviously reels, but then there's carousels. And then if I'm going to do a single post, I've been experimenting more with memes. And those seem to do really well. If I'm going to do a single post, those, those seem to do better than me putting like uh, just a quote or something like that. But there's definitely um, benefit with creating carousels. And everybody knows if you're going to create a carousel, first of all, you can go now to Canva.com and you can just search for carousels. I'm one of the Canva creators there with, uh, you know, I think there's maybe 800 others. Uh, we're creating content for the library all the time. And carousels are one of those things that we're seeing a lot of demand for. And so whether you just need the cover, like you could search for carousel cover, say I've got the rest of it you know, planned out, but you can also search for calls to action. So it might just be a slide that just has that last final slide that you need. And then there's also everything in between. So even if you just search for three page carousel, four page carousel, five page carousel, you can literally search with those terms and you're going to find the full gamut of different, um, different types of posts. And then you can gain insight into, okay, how might I change this content to fit what my audience would need? So carousels, obviously like the cover, the first image is like the biggest, you know, that's the magazine cover. That's the thing that's going to suck people in. But the yeah. beauty of carousels is not just the cover image because there's a chance Maybe you didn't get them with that cover image, but later on you're scrolling through Instagram and you're seeing like the second or third page of that carousel. Yes. It's Instagram serving your content once again, just saying, are you sure you don't want to engage with this content? <laughs> Which is another reason that I love carousel so much. Yes, I'm so glad you said that because yes. not a lot of people realize that, right, Danielle? Yes, and I just included that because I shared a carousel on how to create carousels. And <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so meta. Second page. Yeah, we're going deep in the middle. <laughs> yes. So definitely, yeah, look into that. Second page. <laughs> so I would I, I, I would think it's safe to assume that you would agree as well that carousels are still very important today on Instagram. I mean carousels are actually my way to grow. Um I did not get tons mm. of followers from that viral reel that I had. Um I got a bunch of brand partnership inquiries. <laughs> nice. But um I mean, not not the Spartans though. I mean, I <laughs> come on, Spartans, that. where you at? at you gotta go back next week. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Besides that, um, yeah. I mean, carousels are my way to grow, um, and I love carousels because um, I mean, what does Instagram want? Instagram wants you to stay on that platform yeah. for as long as possible. If somebody scrolls through your carousel and there's a lot of value there's a lot of information added to it and here's the fun fact many people always say don't you know overvalue your carousels don't put too much content in there because it's going to be too much nobody's going to read it it all depends on how you present it mm -hmm. my audience knows that i put a whole lot of stuff and information and content in my carousels and they know what they're getting from it it's kind of like a a small ebook about a certain topic. Um, yep. That's a great way to look at that. Yeah. On a platform, you know, yep. and there are also great carousels where it's, you know, more of a mindset work where you have, you know, a storytelling experience and there might not be as much content, but it's something where you start thinking about on every single slide and you read it and then you read it again and maybe you go back and, you know, so there's mm -hmm. really different ways how you can play with carousels. I think it's one of the best types of content format on Instagram for engagement because you get multiple forms of engagement because if, you, if there's a certain slide that per, somebody might really relate to, they're more likely to share it. And you have, if you do 10 slides, you have 10 opportunities for somebody to actually at least share one piece of content that you just created. But also people tend to save more. They tend to save carousels because they're usually more informative 
you know, it's something that people want to look back on and, you know, keep for the long term. So people end up saving it. But then they're also very conservative in regards to sparking conversations where you could actually, you can bring up so many different topics in a carousel and actually have somebody or individuals talk about particular slides. You know, I've had people comment on my own. They're like, well, on page seven, you said so, so, and so. And we get into a discussion about that. And it's really great for all forms of engagement that I noticed that compared to reels and compared to the single post, I get a lot more engagement on carousels. Yeah, I love carousels. Yeah, definitely. I, I would say same. Um, it, even when I first started my account, the post that did the best, um, like reels did, reels did well, but they were still rolling out at that point. The carousels were the things that were really standing out in that first like six months of me creating content on this account. So I would say for small creators, it's a great, great opportunity for you to post the kind of content that your audience will find valuable, especially if you're a little bit camera shy and you don't really know what to do with video. Like you can kind of like ease your way into creating content through, um, through creating carousels that your audience is going to find valuable. I like that. I like that piece of advice there. Um, so I would like to ask you guys a question. If you could actually get share one piece of advice in regards to carousels, a piece of strategy that you actually use in regards to how you make your carousels, what would it be for the audience to actually try to start practicing themselves? Yes, I'm all prepared for that one. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready. I knew it was coming. I was like, all right, I know my one tip. <laughs> So my one tip is try to make every single page of your carousel a shareable page mm -hmm. because you get so many more shares with that. That's what I do for every single one of my carousels where I find every single page is just shareable. It has its own information. It's had, it, it has its own value and people are sharing individual pages of it. Nice. I like that one make it all shareable because it kind of goes back to what i stated a lot of people share different parts of the of the uh carousel they might relate to one more than the other so i think that's a really great piece of advice yeah uh two things one the first one would be create templates like trying to create a carousel from scratch can be overwhelming especially yeah. if you're spending a ton of time on the research piece to find all of the content so when it comes to the design side of things, you want that to be as seamless and as fast as possible. So whether that's creating your own from scratch that you then use multiple times or creating three different types of uh, carousel templates that you can kind of like sort through, um, that's going to save you so much time on the design and posting side of things. And then the last thing is that I found, you know, everybody in the expert world is like, you know, call to action, call to action. I don't, I can't, I can honestly say I don't put a call to action in every single piece of content that I post, but I do it in every carousel. I always will add a call to action at the end of that. What do you want people to do with all of this information that you've just given them that you've just presented? Is this something yeah. where it's like, save this for later? Uh, or is this like, share this with a friend who needs it? Like if it's a mindset shift or something and you, and people have been having conversations with their, we were just talking about this this morning, whatever, like, you know, people are going to tag it. They're going to share so, and I found that like whatever call to action that I ask them to do, when I look at the insights, that's usually the one that has like the highest. And so it really does make a difference. At least that's what I've seen from my account. Great, great piece of advice. Uh, mine kind of follows up in regards to what you just stated in regards to getting the conversation or getting the engagement with the uh, CTA. I start from the very beginning in regards to, and it's kind of a two, two part of, I have a very simple hook for a title on that first page because that's just to catch their eyes. That's to kind of get you, you yeah. know, like, oh, what is this? Like, according to the way that I phrase the, the uh, title, you want to kind of attract them as best as you can. And then throughout the rest of the actual carousel, according to the content, I usually try to practice a less is more type of aspect. So I don't put too much on each page. But the further you go into the carousel is the more text that I will usually add because you're a little bit more invested with each slide. So I keep it light in the beginning. And by the time you get to like the seventh and eighth slide, you're getting like all of the details, whether it's, uh, it's uh, stats and stuff, something in regards to that. So you're kind of getting like, you know, breadcrumbs along the way and you're getting more by the time you get to the end of the carousel. And then as Roger stated, you hit them with the CTA because at that point, they're very in invested. They either are going to engage 
whether it's a like, a comment, a share, a save, they're more likely to do it at that point. But I think those are all great tips that everybody watching could actually move forward with and actually put into practice to improve their carousels because carousels are still very important on Instagram. It's not all about the reels. It's great that, you know, reels can kind of get you a, a little bit more boost in regards to the wider audience, but you got to make sure that you're catering also to your specific audience of followers that you have now. Give them something of value. And then they'll actually share that and increase your, your general audience in, this, in the meantime. So great piece of advice, guys. Thank you very much for that. Once again, to the audience, take that those tips, those pieces of strategy, and go ahead and step your gram up. Guys, if you got any insight from that conversation, I hope that you would show a little love and support by hitting that like button, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to never miss a video. If you enjoyed our conversation all about carousels, I think you're going to like IG Reels. We had a conversation that's all about it on the screen right now. So go ahead and tap that video, and I hope to see you there.